it's off. It's too late. Remember when you said those vows? In its sickness and in health, Not. till death does part. For Better richer. Better for worse. Yeah, for richer or poorer. Yes. People just say those words and don't really understand the import of taking those vows until certain things happen. Yeah. And when they come... You might not be ready. It might make or break your marriage. Yes. Today we want to talk about unforeseen circumstances. circumstances in marriage. Welcome to another episode of... Love and Everything in Between. married for 11 years and six months and in that time we've been through a lot of ups and downs um we've had quite a lot of unforeseen <laughs> circumstances things we didn't plan for things we never thought would happen mm -hmm. um things that nobody ever prays for yeah um but i think we should talk, talk about today the, about the really significant yeah, ones that significant ones that happened that really shook shook both of us yeah Mm -hmm. And I think the first one that comes to mind is um, when you had to have surgery. Yes, um, I kept stalling. So I had this um, particular condition. I never knew what it was really, but I just know that at some point, randomly, I would just get out of breath. I would have this pain in my chest, you know, and then I hate going to the hospital like really yeah. hit me into the hospital. So I made a couple of calls and then, you know, self-medication. I was told to take a certain um, pain medication and I'll take it and I'll feel fine. So that medication, I can't get over the counter. So I actually have to have ask for prescription. So I remember vividly going to the hospital for something else. And I was like, oh, I need to top up on this um, pain medication because I had the incident the night before. So I went in to see the GP and I was like, oh, I'll, I'm, I don't need you to see me for anything in particular. I would like for you to just give me a prescription for this drug. And the doctor just went, why? So it was a new hospital, new doctor. And I was like, no, I have this um, persisting pain that I take it for. And I was like, okay, what causes the pain? I'm like, I can't do this. Like, if you're not going to give me the medicine, don't worry, I'll go somewhere else. And I was like, no, 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 no. And the guy actually got up and locked the door and was like, I want to really get to the bottom of this. Why? I'm not a fan of just giving medication. And I was really irritated at the time. I was like, you're wasting my time. I need to go. I have things to do. And I was like, bear with me. Just play along. What's causing it? And then, you know, we had a series of questions, had conversation. I told him my history and he says, okay, I want to run this test, this test, this test. And I'm like, I just came here for this. Why am I ending up having to mm. do this? I you know he was calling. I'm like, oh no, it's taking longer than normal. I have to do an ECG. I have to do an X-ray. Like I'm really irritated. But anyway, not a problem. So we did all the tests, and the next day I came in and they're like, oh, my cholesterol level was extremely high. I had to be on some certain drugs to bring down my cholesterol, but that they didn't get a proper reading on the X-ray and would recommend I go see a cardiologist. And I'm like, ah, how did we end up here, you know? So went to the cardiologist. Cardiologist was like, he doesn't think it's a heart problem. I should go and do an MRI. Mm -hmm. So it was when we did the MRI, we now found out that I had a bronchogenic cyst placed right in between my lungs and Your my heart. heart. So for every time it was inflamed or large, it was pressing on my heart which would cause the shortness of breath and then you know because it's in a very awkward space it would now cause the pain so and the only way to get out was going to be surgery and boy <laughs> i wasn't interested in having surgery and i told them i was like you know what guys you've given me all a lot to think about um i'm gonna get back to you i want to get back to you guys and um, i just need time out you know so I called 
a zillion doctors asking what is the best way how do i get rid of it you know and everybody kept saying Bew, the longer you take it's going to keep getting bigger so i was like okay so went on a trip came back and then i went to see a bronchogenic no a What's the name of the doctor? The, cardiothoracic the, surgeon. Yeah, cardiothoracic surgeon. <laughs> I've never heard of all these names before. So we had to go see one. And then he was like, oh, he would have to do a surgery, open my side, open my ribs, get the mask out. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm not doing that. You know, and I was like, oh, recovery time would be more, you know, so it was just like a lot, a lot a of information. Lot. And I was just like, I wasn't ready. And I actually avoided having to do that surgery for the longest of times it was like a year, a plus. year plus i kept you know diddly daddling even the doctor i had seen said but okay eventually saw another surgeon yeah, so he who said, said if he i could wanted do to do minimal yeah minimal evasive which is not having to give me a big scar because my skin also doesn't um heal well, heal well with scars so i said okay fine I did that and then he recommended the doctor that could do it minimal evasively. I went to see him and I was even, I'd even worked myself up to saying, okay, I would do it. But um, the cost, they kept changing the cost on me. So I just said, you know what, if they're this um, meat picky mm -hmm. about the cost, that I'm not sure about the aftercare and I don't want to die. So <laughs> I didn't go for it and then... I started having more pain and eventually I'd agreed, went in for surgery. So I had to call my mom to come stay with the kids because I didn't know how strong I would be after surgery. And after surgery, thankfully, everything was fine. I came out, I was doing well, recovery was happening. So I think the next day after surgery, my mom comes to see me and we're all having a we're conversation. All having a conversation yeah. And I'm like, okay, mommy, what do you want to eat? And then she says, she doesn't say anything. And I'm like, she's just quiet for a little while. This is really weird. Mommy, what do you want to eat? And, and then, then she, the next she just goes, and then, and then she just starts like, and she I has know, a seizure like right there. A, and I'm with so she a, has tube a tube taking out liquid fluid from, from body, my body. The and, drip is in her arm. <laughs> and I'm and like, everything. I need to help my so, mom. So she jumps off. I bed. jump off the bed. I take off I'm my drip. I'm trying to hold her mom. And I'm like, so I have her, her mom, like in a seizure, she's, you know, pulling out the drip and everything. And I'm, you know, and everybody was just chaos. Everybody was freaking out. And then, <laughs> but luckily we were in a hospital, as in we were in a hospital. So, you the know, we yelled was for the quick. doctors, the doctors came. And then she just, her mom just kept having seizure after Multiple seizure seizures. after seizure. And I was just like, okay. And then <laughs> in her mind, she was like, oh, my mom is dying. <laughs> my mom is dying right now like <laughs> i thought it was because of me i thought maybe i'd stressed her and i i kept blaming myself it turns, i think it turns out that she had um she had this condition where basically she was having seizures and she l totally lost her entire memory like completely she didn't know who i was she didn't know who we were so it's almost like it was a reset. She was like somebody hit her reset button, and she had to start all over again. And I had been spending all the time in the hospital because she was in the hospital. And then we had the kids. And then the kids were. <laughs> she was the one that was supposedly so taking care of the kids. kids. And then she just, you know, has that situation, and it just became. It, it was. It was strain. Crazy. It was strenuous on the marriage yes. because I, I was supposed to be healing. And everybody was telling me, you need to, you need to recover, you need to recover. And I'm like, I don't understand what people are saying. If I'm recovering and then she goes, I will be in the house. And then what are people going to tell me? No. So with swollen feet, swollen arms, I was pacing a new hospital because I was discharged from and my then, hospital. Yeah. And I was taken to my mom's hospital and I was just... Everybody was just tired. I think of at me. some point in time we had to see this. Yeah. Yes. Mm, and I was just in that logical place of. Yeah, it was very annoying. Like, just let's <laughs> fix the problem. You are not capable, so take yourself out of out the situation. Yeah. The children need to eat. They need to bath. I need to go. Make sure that they get that done. Come back. Make sure you're okay. Follow up with the consultants who were trying to figure out what was wrong with her mom because I remember that we were trying to take her 
for an MRI, for example, and she once you move her, she has a seizure, seizure. And you know, they were trying various medications. So it was, it was just... It was almost like a trial and yes. error error. So it was just thing. a really tough time because I can't break down and start crying or, you understand, being upset. I just need to sort it out. You are being... Emotional. Emotional all over the place and not seeming to understand basic logic of sit down and rest. You want to see her, we take you, you see her, then you go back. You understand, but your kids want to see you, you're not even receptive to your kids. It was just, it was it insane. Was. But I'm thankful that insane. she's fine, I'm fine, the kids don't remember. No, they don't. And we okay. uh, were able to pull out of that because mm. even that period, it wasn't like I, I would say, um, if you now said you had needs, I'm like... I won't even be thinking about it. No, that's what I'm saying, but some people might... That's a very weird time to be thinking about it. You say? She may say it's food. Yeah, but it's like, there are times when you fast. <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay. It's okay. It's not, okay. It's, not, it's, not, it's not that kind of time. Um, the, I think the, seg the, second, the second one, one was... Uh -huh. That was more. Yeah, it was a bit, that was a bit. That that one shook us. Yes, a lot. A lot more. Yeah, because that was when I had um, surgery. Mm -hmm. I had um, a torn tendon, and I didn't even know what was going on for the longest of time. Yeah, and eventually, um, it turned out I had to have surgery because you know I did physiotherapy for a really long time. Long time. And all that. But for some strange reason. And I think that was when I finally understood your fear. For surgery. With surgery. I just <laughs> didn't want to do Go the surgery. Go under. But, so I'm an extremely logical person. And I, you know, I asked about the process. It told me, oh, this is how it's going to work. This is what's going to happen. And it was pretty straightforward. So it was pretty straightforward. But I just had this unshakable fear. Yeah. And I kept telling, I remember telling everybody. I told the physiotherapist, the surgeon. Just kept telling everybody, I don't want to do the surgery. And... You know, they would explain it to me and logically it made sense. And even I didn't understand. Why you were like, afraid? Why am I scared? Like, it's a surgery. And then it was arthroscopic. Yeah. Everything, I think everything was fine. They told me that gonna, it was going to be general anesthesia. I yeah. think that was the problem. Yeah. I was just like, well, you're going to knock me out. No. And I rationalized it and thought to myself, okay. Maybe I just don't like the fact that I'm going to lose control. Like, yeah. I wouldn't be in control. So, of that's how I yourself, rationalized yeah. it in my head. Like, oh, I, I'm not going to be in control. I'm not going to know what's happening. I'm not. So, that's that's the issue, you know. And I remember that it wasn't a big deal for you. You'd done surgery and all I that. So, it, like, it was like, everybody was just like, guy, let's do the thing. And I remember the day we, they fixed the surgery. Um, it was supposed to be on a Friday. And... I just had this, it was Easter, and I just had this weird premonition that it was not going to, everything was going to go downhill. Mm -hmm. But there was hope on Sunday. I don't, I, it, it didn't really make sense to me. It just, mm -hmm. it just like there's hope on Sunday, but like everything is just, you know. So we went to the hospital, you know, the surgery, they told me we do it in the morning come out in by the evening, evening. We be so we went together Bio was supposed to go to some other places yeah so it was just drop him off um come back and he pick does him. the surgery i'll go off while he's doing the surgery come back and you know i pick him up and um yeah and we'll, we'll go, go home, home in the evening and you didn't go so you went in and then he comes out and he's like oh Everything went well, you know, so as I said, my man, now, okay, all right, so now I can go, but I have to just wait for them to bring him out. And and I was waiting and I was waiting and I was like, ah, what's going on? And people kept calling, is he out? No, I'm still waiting. What's going on? I'm waiting. And I remember getting rather impatient, no like walked up like, Why is it taking okay, so now I've done surgery. I don't think it yeah. took this long. And they bring him out and I look at him so like when they were wheeling him out of the theater, I was standing at the corridor and I looked at him and I was like, why is he, I, I, I didn't even realize I said it out. I just said, why is he breathing like this? And the anesthetics, anesthesia, anesthesia person goes, e to deal. is he not breathing? I was like, okay, did I say something wrong? Mm. I'm like, okay, just, you know what, just chill. 
let them finish what they have to do and put them in recovery, you take it up from there. So I was waiting and then they're trying to fix the ox oxygen, okay. you know, trying to move it from the theater bed to the bed. Luckily, you were still on the theater bed because the person that was supposed to bring oxygen was being clumsy or something. Was, everything was just being, and I was just getting really irritated and I was looking at them and I was looking, I kept looking at you. I remember looking at you very well and I was like, ah, something is not just adding up, but I'm not a medical person, so I didn't know what to say. And the next thing she just says, Madam, talk to your husband. Okay, I thought you said he was fine. Mm, she you know, your husband. She said, call, call your husband's husband. name, call your husband's name. And I'm like, ah, call my husband's name. You know, and in my mind, I'm like, Rugba, <laughs> Rugba, like, and she's like, she just told the nurse, leave, leave, leave. She releases the tire, and next thing, they just wheel you back in, and I'm like, what just happened, what just happened now, <laughs> you know? And doctors, I want to appeal to you people. I know you people went to school, you have seen it all, you are, you have, you have, ah. we the family members. Information is key. Because I stood at that corridor. I literally almost entered the theater. Like, nobody was telling me anything. Just running by. I, and they just come out, they run. I, I saw one coming with oxygen tank. Is that for my husband? No, no, man, it's not for him. I, I, and I'm like, what was happening? I just saw him, you know. And it now clicks to me that the surgeon that had the surgery He's not even there. Because he has finished what he He's finished. So I had to go downstairs and he was on the phone. He was very, I'm coming, I'm coming. And I, I, <laughs> nobody prepares you for these things. And I'm like, so I, I, I now do like this. He says, okay. And I said, they've taken him back in. He, I don't even think I finished that sentence. He freaked out. The guy just freaked out and ran. I was like, okay, now definitely something, something wrong. is wrong. But it turned out that he had actually aspirated after surgery. So his lungs had collapsed. So he wasn't breathing. They were trying to resuscitate him. They were trying to get him to breathe. He wasn't breathing. So they had put him on the ventilator. But nobody told me anything. So I'm standing out there. I don't have information. Family members are calling. I don't know what to tell them. I can't answer any questions. I'm now panicking. And in a very short, in a very, in a very short moment, in me trying to tell him to not give up mm. like in my spirit's mind like okay Roba, please everything will be fine i didn't feel the connection so i already assumed the worst like he's gone i mean there was a time while i was still in the coma where a doctor friend you know yeah, had all said, the doctors were just saying oh don't worry let's watch it let's watch it. and then one of the doctors just said, said you let's be real this guy he's gone he's probably not he's going probably to not it. gonna make it like so people don't people don't survive this so you know what percentage of people that survive that's comas it's... are very very no, not slim. the coma it was the fact that the, i had aspirated, aspirated for during, that long yes i was like you know what so she came to literally prepare me like okay if we need to take do morgue um arrangements so she literally was there to prepare me that this might happen i had to prepare for if if it went south what am I going to tell the kids? What are the what are the plans? And you know, everyone around you is telling you, don't cry, don't let the devil see your tears. Don't and in my mind, I'm like, you guys don't even know where my mind is right now. I'm thinking, okay, how am I going to get money? What do I need to sell? What am I going to am I changing the kids' school? What's their life going to be? What you know, I I I had all those scary thoughts, and I'm like, something just has to happen. And I'm thankful that God was faithful and brought him out of it. The recovery process was another toll mm. on, <laughs> you know, when you are telling someone, be thankful you're alive and he's grumpy he, because he can't do the things that he used to do. He needed to depend I think, on I think, me. I think one of the most humiliating things for people in hospitals and I mean, nurses and all these guys do their best, but the fact that you can't do anything for yourself at all. down to you can't wipe your own butt, you can't take a bath, there's someone just sponging you off. You can't move. Like, I was just literally... Lying there. Lying there, and, you know, people are just doing things to you. So it's not like they're doing... I mean, they're doing stuff for you, but you feel like they're just doing things to you. To you. So someone just comes, just... And the person just comes, shoves <laughs> a needle into you, and your brain is aware. You're feeling the pain. Yeah, you know, all that. So it was, it was such a crazy time, and... 
recovery for him to it was be longer. Long. It, it was, was long, long. because I, it was almost like you ha you also had it was like reset. a reset. So because I actually had to, I couldn't walk. It was strange. I couldn't walk. I couldn't control pee. I could. It was just even your breathing. I couldn't. Yeah, it was just so it was, weird. It was and, a lot. And so, she was there. Constantly, I had to be. The, I had to be the trooper. Constantly, even though I was saying, tired. No, come on, you know, let's, I like, let's, let's do, do this. It. I'll be encouraging. You know, there's that. At least you are here. You are here. So you saw this one. Uh, it's okay. If you want everything. to fight, it's yeah, okay. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, but, because you didn't. The, the 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 three days of what I had experienced, mm, I would not wish it on anyone. Mm. So if it was, he was going to spit at me. <laughs> it's okay. You are sure here you know so he put a lot of pressure on himself like oh why can't i move my arm i i've lost i've lost recovery time because mm, i was I in the was coma in the and in my head i'm like dude calm down you are even happy you should be you're happy alive. you're alive you know Chill. so it's 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 it it's of, affected it's yeah, affected because yeah, yeah. i wasn't understanding the level the drive of, to you know i mean because I, I kept feeling like he was beating himself up too much as far as I was concerned, like, cut yourself some slack. Your yep. body is resetting. Mm. Your body is learning again how to do these things. Even using his laptop, it was a chore because we'll have to set it up. And then he was getting tired easily. Like it was frustrating seconds. for him. But I understood. And in all of this, as much as I was always caring for him, it was taking its toll on me because I wouldn't... I'll be like, be where you 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 catch up on you catch up on sleep or you catch up on work or you catch up on mm. you just have to be here for Rogba. You know he needs this. He needs he need if he wants to lament, you need to be very mm. attentive. Mm. You need to give it the emotion he needs. But nobody asked me, how, how are, are you? you? How are you coping? Now the kids are back home. You uh, know, how so you handle that? it just felt like. Nobody cared how I how how I dealt with it because and everybody was all like, oh, Roma, uh -huh. oh. And then I kept feeling guilty about that. Yes. Like, I'm, I'm causing stress. I'm becoming a burden. burden. I'm causing stress for these people. So I need to suck it up. Stop being a burden. Just don't be a burden anymore. Get yourself together. So, you know that that phrase, be a man. It was drilled into my head as a child. It was drilled into a lot of people's heads. Like a lot of men, not be a man, be a man, be a man. So, you know, at that point, you're trying to be a man. You're human. Yeah. We're all human. It, there's no, there's no medal for, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but just we're human. Let us be human. You will have stress. You will have frustration. You will need to cry. You will need to be upset. It's okay. Just don't dwell there. Yeah. But it's actually okay to let those emotions, those emotions come, through. Um, come through. And so, then eventually, once you know the worst of it all had passed, it now took like a concerted effort for us to actually say, "Guy, um, Auntie, bro, what happened? Was it? What has happened? Was has happened? Right now, <laughs> we need to figure a way to click back. Yeah. If not." You know, the, we'll the just continue drifting apart, apart yeah. and we were able to do that. Um, thankfully, we had a really strong support system, family, yes, family. friends that um, were there. And um, people, you know that whole thing of, um, I'm, I'm going, it's just me and my wife. It's just my wife, my husband and I. I mean, it's good in the sense of, yes, you guys are a unit. A unit but that support system is extremely important. Oh, you can't because take it for granted. No. Without them, I don't see how we would have been able to come through either of those two situations. Um, and it also made us realize that planning for the future is also very was important. also very important it's because extremely important God forbid it had gone south. Um, Nobody sits you down and tells you, you "Oh, um, yeah, you know, your wife might be in the hospital for an extended period of time. She won't be able to work. work or she won't be able to do anything. Nobody tells you, oh, your husband might be in." in the hospital nobody and tells you there's no income coming yeah, in nobody tells you you might lose your job nobody yes. tells you that your husband may die your wife may die do you understand nobody tells you that so you, you, you there's a need to plan so i think for us what we now decided was to do uh, we started trust, planning yes we started, we planning. started planning we started planning okay, if anything like this because i think we had gone through too many 
things. I things mean, even like, before these two things, there were just so, so many, many other things. So I'm, many. I lost my business at a point. Like, I literally had no zero income. income. Zero. Like, everything I'd built just came crashing down in, like, maybe Seconds. a week. <laughs> you know, it was all gone. Yeah. And recovering from that was a whole, whole other, other process. Game. Yeah. So, I think um, planning is very key. Planning together. Um, planning for those times when you know when I, I mean I remember when um, my sister-in-law kept telling me oh you know what why don't you just get health insurance why don't you just get health insurance why don't you just get health insurance I was like why am I getting health insurance you hardly fall ill I don't fall sick the kids don't fall sick but so these people are just going to collect my money they're like, just going to take it and then everything is going to and there was this um, so two times it happened it's just so weird so the first time was when my daughter, I was supposed to pay health insurance for her for a hundred K. One of them, I was supposed to pay a hundred K for health insurance. I was like, he was I'll, just, I'll just pay them a hundred K and then they would just not do anything and then blah and blah and blah. And then my son fell ill and he was in the hospital for the weekend and I paid a hundred and fifty K. That I would have just paid a hundred K for the year. I paid a hundred and fifty K for that weekend. And that made me do health insurance for him. But stubborn me. I still couldn't you didn't learn your find lesson. the logic of doing health insurance for myself. <laughs> you didn't learn your lesson. Like, why am I doing health insurance for myself? But somehow, you know, they, you know, just do this health insurance. You know, one guy came, spoke plenty of English, blah, 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 gave me the pros and cons. I was like, okay, you know what, I'll just do health insurance. So, you know, I did the health insurance. And then there was this day I went with her I to the hospital. I was very livid at that. Where, I yeah, was, and she was ask. even upset that. See, but, you, but you don't go to the hospital, hospital. Like you literally do not go to the hospital. You've never, never been. I don't recall never, I don't have, the Since I've known you. You know, so why are you paying this one? I was like, yeah, the guy explained the pros, the cons, blah, she did all the logic. And then I followed her to the hospital, so she was having a checkup. And while I was there, I was like, oh, I have let me health just, insurance. Yeah, I have health insurance. Let oh, me yeah, just check register and check my blood pressure. <laughs> this woman checks my blood pressure, stands up and runs into the into the doctor's <laughs> office. And I'm like, what's wrong with that? And then the doctor runs out. And they're both like, you need to get um, ad an admission right now. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, ah. What's, What's going happening? on? And the next thing you know, I was admitted in hospital for like a week. Yeah. My blood pressure was like, I just been having so headaches. Roof, you have been having headaches. And I was like, mm. so I'm just trying to imagine. Okay, in that situation, I didn't have the health insurance. What would have happened? What would have happened? Then I'll be paying out of pocket for something that you all could that. Have you understand? So I think it's just plan. You really need to plan. You need to have a, a strong support system. You need to you need to think. I don't want to say think the worst. So it's just prepare for the worst. I mean, plan for the best. But Hope for the best. best and prepare, but for, prepare the for the worst. prepare for the worst because... It can happen. There's that whole... It, it, it I've, will not I've heard to of me. it, but it, it can happen to me. to me. But it can. It can. Happen. It could happen to anyone. So... Um, in um, in conclusion, we've said we've said a lot, but um, I think majorly what we've shared has been health-related, yeah. unforeseen circumstances. Um, circumstances. Um, that seems to be the most common, but a lot more there are types, there are a lot more other things, other that, things could that could happen, but we wanted to just share this too, and in conclusion from what we experienced, what we basically would advise or the tips we would give would be planning. Um, let your, if your kids are old enough, let them know what is in place. Um, health insurance. Let your spouse know what is in Let place. Let your spouse also know what is in place. That's very key. Because if I, if he had been the type that we used to hide things. or code, I would have been very stranded, like yeah. extremely stranded. But thankfully, we are very open with each other. So mm. I even had, <laughs> I think my fingerprint was also yeah it was on my phone. So yeah. when I when I was on that, she needed to call people. Oh, she needed I, could, to I had access money. to his phone. She could just you know use her thumbprint and, all of that. and do what was necessary at the time. If she didn't know that, then she would be running around trying to figure out why am I going to get money or where am I going to do this or where am I going to do that. Or who can I call? So, yeah, you just know? yeah, units. Yeah, so, you know, so have these conversations. It's very key. Very, very important. Um, health yeah. insurance. Health insurance. A will. A I know that will is a very sensitive. Will, trust, it's whatever It's a very sensitive is. topic, but please, no matter yeah. how young you are, yeah, a will is plan. actually very necessary. Just prepare. Prepare. On the next episode of Love and Everything in Between, between. we'll be having a guest on. Yeah. Someone who um, has been, who ended up in an unforeseen circumstance. And we'll talk to her about 
how she's been able to, to handle, handle that and navigate. and navigate that process. So, so we'll see. catch you next time. Marriage is great when, you know, you're, you're together. Now I know how awesome my marriage was, was. now that I don't have this anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> it's beyond, you know, love. And it's just having to live with someone and just understand that people change. Yeah, the good one. As you can see on camera now, we know who the good one is. Eh? How do you mean? How do you mean? You remember how in... Um, <clears throat> remember how... The, the witchcraft is plenty. I can't sit like this, it's impossible. Like I can't. No, I mean physically I can't. Hi for me. Hi for me. She's there. Oh, hi. So we're almost rounding up then you're coming. Okay. <laughs>